Chuck, I got another explainer for you. All righty. This one is lines in the sky. I think you've been an astrophysicist too long because I've been looking up since I've been working with you. Never seen a line <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> Maybe some chemtrails every <laughs> once in a while, but never seen a line. <laughs> You're standing there. Okay. And you're looking due south. All right. Okay. Okay. You take your hand and draw a line from due south. Okay. Directly overhead to due north. All right. You do that. Okay. Okay. That line has a name. The meridian. Okay. The meridian. Now I need you to remember this. The meridian. The meridian. Got, okay. It's a great hotel, by the okay. way. <laughs> okay. All right? Yes. So the meridian. Everyone has a meridian, and it goes directly over their head, connecting due south to due north. Okay. That's one of the lines in the sky. The sun, when it rises, works its way towards your meridian. It's coming, coming from, from the, the east, east, right? and it'll cross your meridian, right? go to the other side of your meridian, and right. then set. Okay. Okay? That makes sense. Okay. Do you know what AM stands for? Um, AM, uh, after midnight. No. No. Let me, th let me think. Something meridian. Anti-meridian. There you go. So anti, anti. Anti. Like, anti. like antebellum? As an antebellum. Before. Before. Like, yes. Anti-meridian. Anti-meridian. Before the meridian. Right. And so then PM must be post. Post meridian. meridian. It's oh. where we get AM and PM from. I thought AM was after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> But then I met, then when I thought, then what would PM be? <laughs> Pre midnight? <laughs> well, this makes no sense. Anti meridian. Anti meridian and, and post meridian. Post meridian. Okay. Cool. Two whole concepts that rely on your meridian. Right. We'll start there. Okay. Let's keep going. You ready? Okay. Let's keep going. Earth's equator, mm -hmm. if you extended it out to the sky, okay. there's a line on the sky that corresponds to Earth's equator. That's called the celestial equator. All right. Okay. That's cool. We together? I'm with you. Now, there's another line that crosses the celestial equator. So think of it as two rings at an angle right. to each other. Right. This ring crosses the celestial equator at an angle of 23 and a half degrees. Okay. All right. That makes sense. 23 and a half degrees. 23 and a half degrees. That line is the path throughout the year that the sun takes against the background stars. Of course, the sun is not taking a path. Right. We're going We're around, going around it. It, it. Right. But let's be pre-Copernican here right. just to make the discussion simple. Okay. Now, why is it 23 and a half degrees? Because we're tilted that way. That is the tilt of Earth. Okay. And because we're tilted, right. the sun doesn't line up with our equator. If we were not tilted, that path of the sun would be right on Earth's equator. It, but interesting yeah, yeah, and different, exactly, okay? Right. But now we're tilted, it means we have seasons, because the tilt gives us seasons. All right. The moon, in its path around the Earth, has its own line. Path, its own line. Okay, but well, this is way too many lines. <laughs> <man. laughs> we're getting a little crazy with the lines. <laughs> That's angled five degrees to our ecliptic. <sighs> okay. okay. So, right. Okay. Okay. So... If the moon is crossing the path of the sun, mm -hmm. at the same time the sun is in that spot, you get what? An eclipse. An eclipse. Right. So this path the sun takes around the earth is called the ecliptic, because that's where you would get an eclipse. Nice. Okay. Ecliptic. The ecliptic. Yes. All right. Anytime the moon intersects it, if they're together, eclipse. Bang. All right. So we call it the ecliptic. Okay. All right. Now, if you want a way to think about it, a loose way to think about it, how far does the sun go every day along that ecliptic? All right, how many days are in a year? 365. How many degrees in a circle? 360. Ah! Look at that. The sun goes approximately a degree a day. Right. Is that cool? That is very cool. That's very cool. A degree a day. So in a month, it goes a degree a day. It goes 30 degrees across the sky. Okay. You just add all that up. Okay? So, more lines. I ain't done with you. Wow. It's got I, more I, lines than the damn subway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready? Go ahead. Earth's longitude and latitude. All right. You can project that onto the sky okay. and have a grid system on the sky. Right. We have that. 
and our longitudes become what we call right ascension, and the latitudes become what we call declination. Declination, okay. Okay, and right ascension is measured in hours, and the declination is measured in degrees. So every object in the sky has a coordinate in right ascension and declination. So if you look at a star map, you'll see this grid. Right. That's how we know where anything is. Right. That's how we tell a telescope to find something on the sky. I was gonna sky. say, that's when you look up and you find any celestial body in a telescope. In a telescope, they say, it's got coordinates. That say the ascension, right ascension, right ascension and, declination. and then declination. And, and that it's, gives it's, you the plot point. It's degrees, minutes, seconds, right. and it's hours, minutes, seconds, just kind of the way we have here on Earth. Cool, okay? Okay. cool, cool. Except we have hours for our right ascension. Here, our longitude is still in degrees, but we could have measured it in hours because it's 24 hours around. We just didn't. Okay. Okay. All right. So now, the North and South Pole have spots on the sky. Okay. You get the North Celestial Pole, mm -hmm. and the South Celestial Pole. Okay. The North Celestial Pole is near Polaris, the North Star. Okay. It's not actually pointing to Polaris. It's like two full moons widths away from it. So it's just kind of near it. And people say, oh, we have a pole star. There's something divine about that, that for our navigation and... No, it's just sort of near it. Sort of near it. Earth, tilted and spinning on its axis, tugged on by the moon, actually wobbles. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. It wobbles. What happens to all these lines? I'm about to tell you. Oh, my God. Uh, watch. Here you go. You ready? <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So, the North Celestial Pole precesses in a circle on the sky right. once every 26,000 years. Oh, my God. Okay. Like a black girl's head bob. <laughs> what's that? <what's> <laughs> <laughs> so, the North Pole traces a circle on the sky once every 26,000 years. Wow. All right. Which means the North Star, Polaris, only happens to be our North Star now. In the days of the Egyptians, 5,000 years ago, it was not pointing to the North Star. Right. I think, I, I gotta check my notes, it was pointing to a Thuban, there's some other star, which was the pole, pole star, star for the for Egyptians. The, for those guys, right. Okay, different pole star. Wow. All right, but it's a 26,000 year cycle. cycle. Okay, and it drags our grid with it. Okay. Because our grid on the sky emanates, it it's matches the grid on the Earth. But how about the stars? What coordinate are they if we're dragging the... So, this freaks people out if they hear it for the very first time. Every coordinate we have for objects in the sky mm -hmm. have a date. It, that is the coordinate they had at that date. At, oh, wow. So we all agree. Are we referencing the year 2000? Right. January 1st at midnight? You give the coordinate and you give a date. Then you... Hand that to your telescope, which is talking to a computer, and the computer says, let us precess the coordinates of your object from that date that you gave it to tonight. Wow. From the year 2000 to the moment you were observing that object. So the grid system is not constant. Right. It's crazy. That's insane. Yeah, and before we had computers doing this. Somebody had to do it by hand. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. We had to precess the coordinates by hand using something called spherical trigonometry. Wow. And it used to be an entire graduate course in astrophysics. And I got into graduate school just when the computer started taking this over. Right. And the, the name of the guy who wrote the book on spherical trigonometry, mm. his name is Smart. Well, guess what? He's dumb now. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> <'Cause> all, <laughs> whoo, all them royalties dried right up. <laughs> oh, what a shame. <laughs> now. A consequence of this grid shifting is that the constellation in the sky that the sun was in mm -hmm. at that month of the year has also shifted. Right. No. Up, 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 up. Mm -hmm. So 2,000 years ago, exactly. when they're laying out the constellations that the sun moves in front of, and they decided there's 12 of them, and they called them the Zodiac because there's animals at zoo. The zoo is the key. Right. The key. The Zodiac. The Zodiac, okay? okay? They were all lined up for astrologers 2,000 years ago. So 2,000 years ago, when all these were laid out and the boundaries and the houses and everything, what percent of 26,000 is 
2,000 years ago. Uh, two times 13, so 20, 113. It's 113, right. the, which is not that far from 112. Right. Okay? Okay. Oh! This is my fail! Oh. This is what I'm saying. That's where we go. So when I see all it. these constellations are shifted by a whole constellation along the zodiac. That kind of messes up the whole premise, though, doesn't it? Like, of. You're telling me? You're telling me that? I'm like. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, okay. So. If I'm born in a certain month. You, correct. The month was when the sun was, when in, the that sun was in that constellation. It's a completely other constellation now. Oh, my God. Correct. Correct. Wait a minute. What? I'm oh. so sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> this is worse than Pluto for you. Because it got set up 2,000 years ago. Right. That's when it got. Not in ancient Egypt, 2,000 years ago. It got set up. Everything's shifted by a constellation. Plus. The sun has a has another <laughs> constellation it goes into, Ophiuchus. The sun passed through 13 constellations, not 12. Wow. But they, they didn't tell you this. So, in fact, the sun spends more time in Ophiuchus than in Scorpius. Well, that's because, I mean, Ophiuchus is hard to say. So, <laughs> you know, Scorpius is easy. Okay. You know. So, if you thought you were Scorpius, you were probably Ophiuchian. And all scorpions and Ophiuchians are currently Librans. This ecliptic, which is where you find the zodiac, right, is shifted is the against the background that that's, stars. That's right. It's shifted against where the sun is on the month of the year. Right. These are your lines in the sky. I'll get to tell you just a couple more lines, and then we'll call it quits. Okay. okay? The Milky Way. All right. Is this band of light? Right. The plane of the Milky Way right. has a line associated with it, and we call that the galactic. Equator. All right. That's another line on the sky. Another line on the sky. You follow that around, the Milky Way is, is puffy on either side of that. Nice. All the way around the sky. Cool. It turns out the center of the Milky Way goes directly overhead when seen from the southern hemisphere, from like 30 degrees south. Right. So, we got the meridian. We got the ecliptic. The ecliptic. We got the moon's equator. It doesn't have a fancy word. It's right. just the moon's the moon, right. path of the moon. We've, we've got, got right the, ascension declination lines, mm -hmm. and we've got the celestial equator. The celestial equator, right on, on top, of, and we got the north and, and north south, and south. Celestial, and you have the the processional circle. Wow! So all those are lines on the sky. Well, you did it again. What? I thought this was going to be a bunch of crap. <laughs> <laughs> when you start out with lines in the sky, I'm like, where can we go with this? Ugh, this is terrible. But this is great. And by the way, when I was a kid, fourth grade, we went on a walking trip to the neighborhood post office. Right. I noticed on the door, it said it had what time it opens, okay? And it said it opened at like 8 or 9 a.m., okay? And then it said 12... And then it continued on to the PM and gave another set of hours. And the 12 just had an M next to it. When I was a kid, I said, why does it just have an M? Right. That's Meridian. Meridian. That's 12 noon. 12 noon. The middle of the day. Wow. That's even a new thing we all just picked up. What, what time will you want to meet? Uh, why don't we meet at 12 M? <laughs> <laughs> Man, what the hell are you talking about? So there you go. That's My, great. Lines in the sky. Nice job. Okay. There's been another Star Talk explainer on weird, random stuff you never thought you'd ever care about, and maybe still don't. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, thanks for being here. Always a pleasure. All right, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you're a personal astrophysicist, reporting from my office. The Cosmic Crib. <laughs> at the American Museum of Natural History. As always, keep looking up.